Hey, this is Michael Lindsay. I'm going to apologize ahead of time for the audio on this video. I'm out and about on the run, but I wanted to go through what popped up at this year's 2019 Tokyo Motorcycle Show, which was a electric motocross prototype that Honda is now showing off. It's not actually the first bike of this nature they've shown off, and I actually believe it was at this same style show a couple years ago. They showed off more of a concept of what they considered an electric motocross bike could look like, and I guess the best way to term it was it looked like a Jurassic Park bike. But the bike they're showing off this year actually looks way more like a, a test bed bike, a bike that they are currently actively testing. And the easiest way, of course, to do that is, I mean, just by looking at it, it's basically a Honda CRF250R that they have changed out all the powertrain system in. And by that, I'm saying the frame looks like the exact production frame and swing arm off the line, albeit with a couple small modifications for the powertrain unit. But in that, just even by the way they spruced it up for this show, is it has a ton of Works HRC parts on it from their motocross team, like Works kit suspension from Showa, triple clamps, the billet hubs, uh, Works Niston brake caliper, all that stuff is goodies you normally find on their factory level motocross bikes. And they've been able to put those all on this model because basically all the fitments seem to be exactly the same. And of course, this is really good for them to start with as a test bed bike because it allows their engineers and their test riders to basically start with a bike they know has their CRF feel. The Honda is, of course, point of when they would want to release a full-size electric motocross bike is like, hey, we've produced this bike and has that CRF feel. So naturally, that's where they're going to start with and see how switching to an electric powertrain unit is going to affect how the bike handles, how it flexes, how that power input torques on the bike and how it changes its characteristics. So naturally this is a really easy place for them to start with. All the bodywork seems to be exactly the same, even the little cover that which would basically now cover a fake tank right in front of the seat. Uh, other than the side plates have changed, they're thinned out since there's no dual exhaust system to cover anymore. They're able to cut down on the size of those by quite a bit. Uh, other than that, like I said, you look at it, foot peg position, bars, clamps, brakes, all exactly the same for one of their motocross models. The powertrain itself, if I had to guess, is likely in development with the uh, Mugen branch, or at least the Mugen branding that Honda has been using at the Isle of Mon TT for their electric road race bike they've been testing and showing off there each year and running in the electric class. Uh, you can see the little bit of the Mugen logo or the Japanese version lettering of their logo right above the Honda logo on the right side engine case. Um, what makes this powertrain I guess not so unique as compared to what else we've seen. Uh, the last really successful full-size electric motocross bike we saw is the Alta, which just went out of production recently. It kind of had a similar theory where there is no clutch on this bike or no power uh, restriction unit connected to a lever. Uh, it is appears to at least be a single gear driven bike. There is no shift lever on the left side of the case at all. Um, the only thing that makes me wonder is up on the, the handlebars, there is what appears to be derived from their World Superbike or MotoGP bikes, little buns on the left side that I really don't know how to explain if they're map switches or not. Um, there's always a slight chance that might shift something, but I would have to guess they're going with the similar out, uh, similar uh, control or platform that Alta uses, where it's just all throttle based and single gear driven. Uh, the other thing that's unique is on the right side of the case, you do have a bleed port above uh, the red red cover case that kind of looks like one you would see on a hydraulic clutch slit, uh, cylinder or a brake caliper where you would bleed a hydraulic line. So, I mean, there is, of course, fluid or hydraulic fluid or an engine oil style fluid inside the engine to keep things lubricated. I don't know if this has to do with that or some other system that uh, we're not quite able to see from just an outside glance. Uh, but like I said, we've got no shifter, no clutch lever up on the bars. You'll see we have a much larger throttle housing because there's no cables to drive a pulley system for a carburetor or a throttle body. Instead, it's a drive-by or ride-by wire system. You're going to have this large housing with a small wire, which probably leads to the engine control unit for this bike. And then also on the right side, there is what I would consider a much more typical map switch from Honda. It looks a lot more like the ones they have on their HRC motocross models, whether it's in Europe or America. They use a very similar box for this for that unit. And there and that, what's really unique or at least different than what we saw with the Alta is the fact that it actually has external liquid cooling. We have typical radiator shrouds because there's two small radiators in there. They're about a half to third size capacity of what was previously on the bike, and you can actually see the routing as it goes in and out of the engine or 
motor unit on each side. So they're externally liquid cooling this motor. The other thing, of course, that's unique about this one is the sizing they've attempted. The Alta had a very unique frame design because it went uh, more around the motor pack or the motor and battery pack they had developed. Uh, in this case, it looks like I said, Honda's really trying to at least start with that CRF-derived handling or feel of the bike. So the powertrain itself seems to be a lot more compact. The fact that it's fit in what looks like the complete production frame with only minor modifications. So the overall sizing of their unit seems to be quite smaller. The thing we cannot tell without any tech info though is what they've attempted with the battery pack. If it is on par with the Alta for range or overall basically output or energy storage, if it's below or if they have somehow managed to get above that with this size pack. That's not clear because there is little to no info on this bike. And speaking of info about this bike, I wouldn't expect to see much before the late part of the year. The next chance we'll probably get to see this bike, at least with more extended info, would be the ICMA show in the fall. That is typically the type of worldwide show where a manufacturer like Honda would like to bring a concept bike out. And typically they've been bringing bikes to this type of show where they showed off one year in concept form, one year in a more finalized form, and then finally production. So if they do bring it later this year, it would be really cool because they'll probably give us more info. And it would also mean that we are on a clear roadmap for production if they bring it there with that kind of info. So for now, we don't know what it weighs, what the power output is. It's just cool to see Honda taking a legit shot at an electric motocross bike and taking it serious enough to develop it uh, alongside or in a considerable platform to their CRF line.